Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, kicking off this session, I did want to highlight the significance of that number, uh, 3,139, because that's the amount of lives that were lost to suicide in Australia during the last year on record. And that's nine lives lost per day, and those numbers are increasing. And we can never underestimate the impact of every life lost to suicide has on family, friends, workplaces, and the broader community. I've personally lost close friends to suicide, and I'm sure I'm not alone on that. Over 10 million Australian adults are estimated to know someone who has died of suicide and one in two young people are impacted by suicide before they turn 25. So the main reason that we're taking part in the push-up challenge is not to get buff or increase the connectedness uh, of our teams through a physical-based challenge, although those are most excellent byproducts. It's actually to make a difference to mental health and suicide prevention. And the best way to do that is to create awareness. We all spend a lot of our uh, time at work and as a company, we ask a lot of you in order to be committed to what we're trying to achieve. And I sense you is also committed to creating an environment where you can be all that you can be. And intrinsic to, to that is supporting you to be as healthy as possible, both physically and mentally. We're really lucky to be joined by the inspiring founder of the Push Up Challenge today, Nick Hudson. Uh, Nick founded and, uh, and grew the push-up challenge from just four mates trying to get fit uh, to engage over 250,000 participants and raise over $16 million for mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, today, Nick is going to share with us his story of open heart surgery, depression, and growing Australia's largest exercise-based mental health event. Uh, Nick was recently awarded the Mental Health Advocate of the Year in WA and continues to push for better mental health across the country. So I'm now going to hand you over to the man with potentially the coolest job title in the world, the chief, <laughs> the chief of push-ups. Over to you, Nick. That's right. Thanks, Russ. And my pleasure being here uh, this morning uh, to present to you on the push-up challenge. There's a few things I want to go through uh, with you, um, but I do want to point out on, on behalf of the team that we really appreciate Accenture's support of not only the event by taking part in it, um, but also through the services that you offer that my team are loving. <laughs> so my team love insights, they love data, as do I. Uh, so the services you're providing to us are just awesome. Cool. All right, let's rip into it. So the push-up challenge. Uh, some of you may have heard about what it is, but uh, basically it's a great way, a uh, unique way to engage people in mental health through you know, getting fit, learning about mental health and connection, some of the things that Russ has already talked about. So um, through the push-up challenge, um, we can achieve some of these great things. Um, this year, the event is running in June, so it runs in June, or running in June, uh, for 24 days um, with three rest days in there. As Russ mentioned, 3,139 push-ups representing the number of Australians who took their own lives in 2020. So look, it's a pretty serious topic. I get that. Um, pretty you know, heavy stuff there. But what we're trying to do is make uh, talking about it a little bit more accessible um, and allow people to uh, engage with it in a fun way. Again, we know it's a morbid topic, but we want to open up the conversations and sort of provide that license for people to talk about um, mental health in general. So through the event, the target number of push-ups varies per day to reflect a different mental health statistic. So day one, it might be 80 push-ups. Day two, it might be 120 push-ups. Uh, it varies over the 24 days of the event um, to allow people to learn about mental health. So through the app, which you will probably use um, for the event, uh, you'll be able to bank your push-ups. You jump on there and you bank them. Um, see how others in your team and the Ascension community are going, uh, see how your mates are going and maybe give them a bit of shit if they're falling behind, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, learn about mental health as well. So every day, open up the app, uh, you'll see the day's mental health facts, um, bank push-ups, get some sweet online badges, all that sort of good stuff along the way. So it's a really good event to you know, have a bit of fun with it. Um, as Ross said, to maybe get buff or buffer, uh, depending on where you're at, um, and to learn about it. Uh, mental health, um, stay connected with, with teammates, which I know is number one focus, but that's an inherent byproduct of the event, um, and to stimulate that good conversation about mental health as well. And of course, you've got the opportunity to fundraise too. So we, this year we're supporting Lifeline and Movember, and you can choose to support one of those charities or perhaps our own charity, which is the Push for Better Foundation. So some of the themes that's touched on, event promotes fitness, connection, team spirit, um, and it's free to take part in, okay? So don't feel like you need to pay for the app or anything like that. And it's very easy to get involved. Now, I know Russ said 
um, you, you don't have to take on the full amount. And that is 100% correct. So if 3,139 push-ups doesn't sound like your sort of thing, we understand you wouldn't be the first person to say that. You can take on a portion of that, okay? You can take on 25% or 50%, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Also, you can do alternatives to push-ups. You can do sit-ups or squats or star jumps, is one I recently heard. Um, last year, we had a 10-year-old complete the event, and we also had a 82-year-old in Queensland um, complete the event, 82-year-old Audrey. Audrey did uh, wall push-ups um, for, her, for her version of the event. So it's very accessible. Um, so, yeah, basically anyone can get involved. All right, a little bit of the backstory. Uh, so yes, it did kick off um, six years ago now. So we're in our sixth year uh, this year with four mates um, in July who were all trying to get <laughs> their beach bodies back for summer. Um, we challenged ourselves to do a, a shit ton of push-ups. And uh, what we didn't realize is that not only would the event help us get fit, but it kept us connected because every day we were checking in with each other multiple times per day saying, you know, Rhiannon, how are you going with your push-ups? How many have you done today? And oh, Russ, I see you've only done 10. What's up? It's, yeah, it's 9 p.m. Mate, you know, smash out a few more. So it was, it was a great way for us to stay connected over the event. So I thought, all right, well, why not grow it into something a little bit more than that? So year two, um, spread it more widely, got some friends of friends involved, and we had 1,000 people taking part uh, over Australia, which was something I was absolutely chuffed by. Um, we had one guy taking part, just one person taking part in the Northern Territory. Uh, thank God. So I was able to say we had, uh, it was a national event. So one person in every state and territory in Australia. So I'm not sure who that one guy was in the Northern Territory. I should probably look him up and thank him for uh, taking part. So we can say it was a national event. Um, so 2018, yeah, thousands of people taking part and we raised uh, $50,000 for mental health, which I was, you know, quite chuffed by. After that, uh, after that event, uh, I did what a lot of guys in, in Perth do to uh, celebrate, celebrate um, achievement. Um, and we, I went to Bali. I went to Bali with a few mates. Um, and a bit of surfing, a bit of fun. Um, but I noticed out of the surf that my, I was really unfit. And um, I was like, well, this is, this is a bit unusual. Um, came back to Perth and, and it was a little bit, um, you know, I got back to work the day after sort of flying back, a little bit dazzled from the whole Bali experience. And so I, I grabbed a coffee, um, which I never do. I don't, don't um, you know, I usually avoid caffeine. Um, and my heart started going nuts. I was walking back to the office. I was like, well, something's not right here. And long story short, I found out I had to have open heart surgery. Um, now, being a somewhat fit guy, he's very active in the community, active in Surf 5-7 Club, the rest of it, uh, finding out I couldn't exercise for a while um, and that my heart, the source of me being able to exercise, was in danger, that did not sit with me um, well at all. So... I started going downhill, um, well, physically, but also mentally, uh, and fell into a depression. So in those couple of months leading up to that surgery, I was in a pretty bad way. Um, obviously, yeah, couldn't run and the rest of it, uh, but I was starting to reject my family and, and my mates um, and sort of withdrawing from what was usually a very sort of social lifestyle um, and, and hit, um, it hit, hit rough times. So anyhow, I had the surgery. Um, in this photo of my brother and my parents, um, smiling a little bit too much for my liking in this photo, but uh, nonetheless, uh, look, the surgery went well, so that was good news. Uh, but the recovery was a was an absolute was an absolute dog. So um, coming out of surgery and hats off to the to the medical team, they were excellent. Uh, but, but coming out of surgery and being stuck in bed for um, you know quite a while, I was down I was, the surgery was in melbourne so it was away from my um my usual support network in perth which is where i live um so i was in bed by myself just just bored feeling sorry for myself and and still quite depressed so what i decided to do was was build this push-up challenge thing that um, had had some um success the previous year into something else so i was there in bed um not really walking too much at that stage but i onto my laptop 
um, and the power of the internet, I decided to, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's build something uh, bigger and better and more meaningful about mental health. So that year, um, put a bit more effort into it and um, yeah, a bit more time or a lot more time into it and we grew it even further. So in 2019, which is what, three years ago, uh, we had 49,000 people taking part and we raised two and a half million dollars for, for mental health, which, you know, absolutely stoked by. Um, following that, previous year, um, year one of the pandemic, uh, we had, you know, we, we had 130,000 people across Australia. Uh, we raised five million. And then last year, um, we had over 170,000 people and we raised $9 million in that, in that year for mental health, which absolutely stoked the buy. So we've come a long way in, in just those five years in, in year six this year, and who knows what we're going to achieve uh, this year. But what, what, we've, what we achieved last year was, was absolutely mind-blowing to me and, and the Push Up Challenge team in, in the way that we um, engaged Australians. And you know, a lot of participants, a lot of funds raised, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of sore arms um across the country and so 240 million push-ups which is the equivalent of around 10 push-ups per australian so i'd like to think we <laughs> increase the health of the average australian by 10 push-ups i know it doesn't quite work like that but that's one way of looking at it so i guess what was hard to measure um so i'm a big numbers guy as many of you at Accenture uh, maybe are as well um the um yeah, so a big focus on numbers. What what pains me is the inability or difficulty in being able to measure conversations. Uh, something I think Accenture does uh, reasonably well, actually. Um, so the, one of the key things which Russ uh, touched on earlier is us being able to stimulate conversations, which is hard for us to capture um, digitally and record that. But that's one of the main values um, of the event. And some of the feedback we get from participants is just overwhelmingly positive. Um, um, positive. So this is um, feedback from Motiata, who took part in last year's event, I think it was, or maybe the year before, um, actually last year's event, and talking about her experience with the event and how she wouldn't normally engage in an event like this, but found a lot of value from it. And they're the stories, that we get so many of these stories coming in and they're really, really cool. And that's why we do it. It's stories like this that, that warm our hearts and motivate us to do you know, even more in this space. The impact on participants is, yeah, really cool. Um, and of last year's participants, we surveyed a lot of them, you know, and you know, the majority of them said the mood was improved, more mindful about mental health, and they exercised more. So the amount of exercise they normally did was increased after the event, um, you know, three months later. So they were surveyed immediately after the event, and then three months later, and they said they would you know, had exercised more as a result of the push-up challenge. They continue to exercise more, does that make sense? So we, we think that we know that the, the long-term, the short and the long-term impacts of, of the event are really positive, which again, is great motivation for us to um, to keep doing our thing. So I've got some numbers, and again, I could talk, talk about numbers for days, uh, but lots of great stories as well. So um, the push-up challenge, it's all about getting fit, learning about mental health, uh, connecting with others, hopefully fundraising for mental health as well. If, um, if you or Essential want to do that, again, fundraising is, is optional, so you don't have to. But if you do want to, that's, that's super cool. You can support Movember Lifeline or our own foundation, the Push for Better Foundation. But, uh, um, I'm curious, as someone who, you know, we're, we, and Kelly will attest to this, you know, we, we really support, um, from my perspective, uh, people um, at, at Icentia and we have uh, uh, lots of um, um, employment assistance programs um, that, that, are, that are available to, to all staff members. But as someone who, um, you know, has, has um, friends and loved ones who, who have struggled with depression, for, for someone who sees somebody who's, who's depressed or is who's doing it a bit tough, what, what, what's the advice that you give them? What's the best way to, to help them? Um, you know, not overcome, but to, to, to make it a little bit, bit better for them? It's, yeah, good question. And geez, Russ, tough, tough question. <laughs> but uh, look, what, what I've done in the past and what um, some of my friends and family have done for me when I was going through uh, my rough patch was just be there for that person, which isn't a sort of smothering thing. At least in my experience, it's not a smothering thing. It's not a, yeah, it's not, it's not demanding. It's not putting pressure on them. It's just occasionally checking in and just 
leaving that door open and letting them know that someone's thinking about them is, is what I've found to be effective. That in my experience, there might, there might be others with other experiences. If anyone else here has anything uh, on that front, we can hear them chip in. But so it's for me, it's not being pressuring. Hey, let's go. Hey, mate, I know you're down. Let's go for a walk. No, no, no. Um, hey, mate, why aren't you ret- replying to my text? No, no, no. So, hey, mate, not sure if you caught the game yesterday. What, what did you see the ending? How amazing was that? Hope you're doing all right. Cheers. Yeah. And which is which is not requiring anything from them. You're not you're not asking for a reply. You're not asking for them to catch up. But you're just leaving that door open, knowing that you know you're sort of supporting them in a way. You're knowing that they're part of your life, um, and that they have that connection, even though it's you know maybe a little bit. They may think it's quite weak at that point. Um, but I think we often un- underestimate just how important we are in other people's lives and you may think oh no one cares about me or or no one thinks about me but but think about (laughs) how much you think about other people just Mm -hmm. and so other people are probably thinking about you you know how's you know how's russ going how's rihanna going so just just being there is is is, you know in in a non-confronting way i found to be helpful um, the only thing I would add to that, Nick, and I, th- I think that's absolutely bang on um, around that connection for people, um, but also understanding for anyone on this call or anyone as part of Icentia, we do have professional services and, and that doesn't just extend to yourself as an individual if you are if you feel like, you know, because, you know, life is a little bit tough. So sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Um, that may not be your family or you may need some professional support. So um, we do have that for individuals as well as your family members. So it extends right through to that. So even if your sister's having a bit of a tough time or a brother, mother, any of those types of folk around you, you're more than welcome to um, refer them to our professional services. And, you know, that's on GAP. You can find the details 24-7, all of that sort of stuff. So... Um, yeah, if you feel like you you can't make that connection with someone or you're not quite sure, absolutely there's some professional support around around Icentians and their families. Yeah. It's, if if, if, if Icentia has that service available to employees, I've got to say that's awesome and mm. people should leverage that. Like yeah. give them a call or, or, read, or however, email, whatever that, mm. give them a shot because these services are completely unutilised. Every time mm. I hear someone um, reach out to them, it's like, oh, my gosh, I wish I'd done that yeah. a week, a month, months ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and to, no, that's available to individual to not only help them with themselves but mm. help them help their, their network is, yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. And Nick, um, the, the push-up challenge raises is funds for um, for three very, very worthy causes who are continuing to in the in in the field of mental health support and research. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So this year yeah. we're supporting um, Lifeline Movember and the Push for Better Foundation. That, that's our own foundation, yeah. trying to cover the spectrum there. So we've got Lifeline who are really up the you know the, the acute end of mental health. Um, uh, Movember are more around prevention and. Um, and we're up the sort of education and, and um, uh, in awareness space. So we're, we're trying to uh, cover that spectrum. For participants in the push-up challenge, you can choose to support one of those three um, or potentially support a local lifeline centre. So there are over 40 yeah. lifeline centres across Australia. You can choose to, to fundraise for one of those in particular, if you like. Yeah, awesome. Well, if you if those tuning in or anything like me, you're feeling inspired to to uh, get down and start hurting your arms and do some push-ups through. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, on behalf of us all, Nick, you know, I know it's a really, really busy time for you in the in the lead up. And thank you so much for, for spending half an hour with us. But we are we are all really, really proud to be part of, of what you're doing here. Um, and yeah, we we wish you wish you all the best for for this year and beyond in in um, in increasing that awareness and, and support for something that is is so extremely important. So. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. Russ, my pleasure to be here and thanks to the team for being involved.